Welcome to round three of the 2009 Britpart MSA British Cross Country Championship. The sun is shining here in Galloway, Scotland, and Tim Dilworth arrives fresh from his convincing victory over round one winner and reigning champion Richard Kershaw. Dan Lofthouse, Martin Gold and Chris Hammond were also showing their form and will surely be looking to make it three different drivers at the top in as many events. James Webb will be another one to watch closely. He came on strong last time out. Stay with us on Motors TV as we bring you all the action from this two-day event. A testing six and a half mile course faces the crews here at Forest Lodge Estate with a total of 13 runs over Saturday and Sunday. Let's get the action underway with the first couple of runs and see how everyone copes with the rough conditions on the stage. Richard Kershaw wasn't letting road position cause a problem for him and over the first two runs he set fastest times to take the lead of the event from the start. Dan Lofthouse was close behind over the first run, his time's enough to put him in second place. He's shown good form so far this season and round three is looking good so far. Round two winner Tim Dilworth was a little slow on the first run due to a puncture and was lying in fifth place, but a good time on the second run moved him up to fourth and kick-started another battle at the top. Ian Rochelle in his Millington Maserati finished run two in third place. The car now seems to have left its round two misfire behind. Another early pace setter, Martin Gold's first run would be better than his second third fastest on run one, he lost time on the second due to a puncture and moved down to fifth. Colin Gold in the Bowler Wildcat was another driver who would start well, sixth fastest around the first run of the stage. Despite a faster time on his second run, it wouldn't reflect in his position. He finished the second run in eighth place. James Webb went well at round two and arrives here in Galloway to have another go. Some good times on these runs saw him in seventh place. Ben Gott had been eighth fastest on the first run but dropped down to tenth on run two and things wouldn't get any better as the morning went on. Justin Birchall had been showing some good pace on round one, but problems with the car prevented him getting a good finish. Chris Hammond finished run one in tenth place, a puncture less than halfway through the stage losing him valuable time at this early stage. But he would make it up on run two and set a good time to pull him back to sixth place. Over the next few runs, Richard Kershaw held on to the lead, but it wasn't easy. He was being chased down by a couple of crews on the pace and hungry for a win. Martin Gold had gained a place and was now in four. However, a puncture on run four and an even bigger problem on run five meant he stopped in stage and took a maximum, dropping him down to 19th overall. Unfortunately for Dan Lofthouse, it was much worse. He had been lying in second place all morning but stopped to help Martin Gold on the stage and unfortunately broke the gearbox in the process, putting him out of the rest of the event. This was despite the team's best attempts to fix the gearbox. Tim Dilworth had pulled back some time from his puncture on run one and was now in third place. With another win in his sights, he and Anthony Brinkman were sure to be pushing hard despite the tough conditions on the stage. For Chris Hammond though, it wouldn't be such a good morning in the forest. Just over halfway through run four, the suspension broke on the car, leaving him stranded on the side of the course. The car was recovered and Hammond received a maximum time, dropping him down to 20th overall. Over the final three runs of the day, Richard Kershaw looked to be back on top. But on the last run, he took a time almost two minutes slower than his average and it dropped him down to third place. At the halfway point, this could prove to be a significant change. This meant that Tim Dilworth was back on top, but it certainly wasn't over. 
Tim suffered a puncture on the seventh run of the day, ripping all but the centre of the wheel off the car. Luckily, they had limped over the finish line and recorded a respectable time. Ian Rochelle was now catching Dilworth and was sat only seven seconds behind him in second place. Despite the Maserati only looking small, it seemed to suit these conditions and had suffered less than a lot of the other cars during his first day. Justin Birchall continued his push and was now up to fourth overall at the end of day one, showing both his and the car's pace. James Webb was pulling back some time now and climbing back up to get himself into fifth place for the overnight halt. Greg McLeod was setting some great times as the day went on and was on track for fifth place at the end of the day, but disaster struck when a front puncture during a fast section bounced the car out of the rut and he lost control, the car rolling down a bank and into the trees. A joint effort from the series specialist recovery team Diflock 8 and Solway Recovery pulled the car back out from its resting place and Greg was able to continue the following day, although now down in 18th place. So, only five runs lie ahead of the crews on this final day of competition and the results are far from decided. Tim Dilworth starts the day as number one and he particularly will be looking to avoid problems and hold on to the lead for his second victory of the season. Dilworth can't afford to take the pressure off though and as he shows here, he didn't intend to over the first couple of runs. Richard Kershaw was now in close pursuit, trying his best to catch Dilworth. A gap of almost a minute separates these two championship contenders, but if Galloway has taught the teams anything this weekend, it's that anything can happen on the stage. It's all still to play for going into the final few runs of the day. Ian Rochell was hanging on in third place, and with some of his times very close to the top two, we wouldn't rule him out as a potential winner here at round three. So, as we go into the final part of the event, three runs remain. Let's take a look now at the overall positions. Ian Rochelle has proven the reliability and speed of his Millington-powered Maserati. He finished the event in third overall, only a few minutes off the pace of the top two. Plenty of drama at the top of the results too. Richard Kershaw has spent much of day two trying his best to chase down Dilworth. A stall on one of the final runs cost him a few seconds, but Dilworth wasn't going to get the trouble-free run he wanted. A puncture on the same stage saw him lose some time. Because of this, no change at the top, and Tim Dilworth and Anthony Brinkman take their second victory in a row, leaving Richard Kershaw 35 seconds behind in second place. A very similar story to round two. Tim, the event looked really good, but it could have all been so different yesterday. Well, yes, we started off uh, on stage one and we had two punches, which dropped us 40 seconds to uh, Richard. So it was a bit of catch up from there on in. And then this is all that was left of your wheel after one of the runs, um, literally shearing around the hub. Yeah. So luckily uh, you managed to drag it through the finish. Yeah, we came, came through, sit, sat on the disc and then it sheared the bottom pin off the, uh, off the wishbone. And then it just came, we just got it through the finish. It was about uh, 400 metres from the finish, so it was really lucky. So all credit to you and the lads for getting the car sorted and back out. Yes, yeah, because we were quite tight with time for doing the last run last night, so uh, we managed to get the lap done and then it's all been good. A fantastic result, your second win. You look, you look chuffed, but you look knackered. <laughs> yes, it's been quite a hard race. It's really hard on the car here because of the uh, it's all fresh gravel, so it's really rough and it ruts out really badly. So punches has been the main issue for everybody. If you could keep the wheels on the car, then you could keep going. So is this the way we're going then with the championship? Well, it, it can only help, can't it? Is it too early to start thinking about that? Yes, yes, there's plenty more races left. Plenty more races left. So uh, you need to keep Richard will be on it, so we've just got to try and keep him in touch if we can. We'll keep on it and we'll look forward to speaking to you later in the season. Thank you very much.